Hi, my name is Brian and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to design a sump for your saltwater fish tank. This will work for fish only tanks, it will also work for reef tanks, and if you have another aquatic system that you need a sump for, the same concepts apply and you can use this process. When I was researching this on the internet, there are a ton of designs that are out there, but they don't really talk about why or how or how to size it and so I realized when I went through these steps that this is probably something I should share. For those of you that have been following my other videos you know I have a 350 gallon saltwater tank. My tank's measurements are 8 feet wide, 3 feet from front to back and 2 feet tall. My tank will eventually be designed to mimic the top of what you would see if you were diving in say Cozumel or Hawaii, the top of a reef. So for those who are new to the hobby let me show you what a sump is. In most installations, you have a tank, you have fish, obviously you can see I'm not Picasso, so you get the idea. Underneath of most fish tanks, you have what's called a sump, and the idea with a sump is that you don't want all your filters and your other maintenance equipment hanging off the uh, back of your tank. And so you put your filters and your pumps and your other things that keep your tank running down here. Now when you get into a larger system, the sump is not normally underneath the tank and that, that's my case. In my case I have the luxury of I own the house and so I can move the tank somewhere else and so my sump is actually in another room and it's easier for me to work on. But that's really the only advantage to this. It requires a little bit more pump and it requires of course a dedicated space, um, but it keeps what I refer to as the stink and the smell away from the tank because this is the part of the tank that's dirty. So what we're going to talk about today is how to design this because I think this is something that's really overlooked on a lot of websites that talk about sumps. So the first thing you need to do is you may need to make a list of what your sump needs to do. So, Okay, and I've made a list of the things that my sump needs to be able to do for my tank. One thing that's important to keep in mind when you are designing your sump is that uh, there's not a right way or a wrong way to do this. This is just the collection of filtration that I think is necessary to service my tank. Different people have different beliefs about what's necessary. I've studied this for a long time and this is my list, so if your list is slightly different, it doesn't mean that uh, I'm right and you're wrong or vice versa. So I need to have water coming from the tank, I need water returning to the tank, I need a top off uh, functionality, I need a deep sand bed, a refugium, heater, chiller, UV filter, skimmer, rock, and probes. And you'll see here, the next step in, in what I recommend in designing this is to actually flowchart how you want your system to be connected. And this is one of the things that's really missing from most of the material that's on the web. So, so the return from the tank and the return to the tank. Obviously, from here to here is what your skimmer does. And um, so then what you want to do is figure out where, where different functions are going to live. So I'm actually going to extend this and my top off is going to go in here. My heater is going to go in here. My chiller intake and return is going to go in here my UV filter pickup and return is going to go in here. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little check mark next to the functions as I put them onto my diagram. Everything that comes into my sump is going to go through a, uh, a live rock filter. Uh, really the purpose of this is it just gives critters a place to grow. So I expect uh, small marine life, um, sponges and algaes to uh, live here along with lots of bacteria.
my refugium is going to go here. One thing that's important to keep in mind is there's a gallons per minute that you want to go through your refugium and you don't want all of your water to go through your refugium. So one of the design problems that I need to solve is how do I have some of this bypass my, my uh, refugium. Next is going to be my skimmer. Um, I'm going to use what's called a counter current skimmer. And a, count current, a counter current skimmer um, uses an air stone and uh, uses slow moving water. The primary advantage to this is it delivers better filtration, but it is also significantly less expensive to operate because I'm not using a big pump to make bubbles. And in this particular case, I actually think I want to feed my skimmer directly from the tank. Um, and uh, and this, can, this can go either way. So I'll just put a little ore there. And um, I use submergible heaters, or submersible heaters, so this is not a big deal. The chiller and the UV filter will just simply be um, returned into here and, come, and, and drawn from there. So, my refugium is on there. My deep sand bed will be part of my refugium. So that kills two birds with one stone. I have my rocks, and of course my probes are going to go in here, so that's something else I need to consider when I design this. And, again, this list of components is specific to my tank. Your list may be slightly different. Um, next, I'll, I'll proceed to actually plan this out. Now, there are a couple of things you need to consider when you're designing this, when you're designing your system, and one of them is called, I, I call it a drain down. Um, on my system, if I cut the pumps, I have about 22 gallons of water that needs to find a place to go. And um, that's going to wind up in my sump because my sump is the low point in my system. And what that translates to is I just need to leave extra space at the top of my sump. Okay, so I've done a little bit of drawing while I had the camera off, um, and one of the things I've done is I've plugged in some of these numbers here. So my return to tank number is 1,500 gallons an hour, which turns over my tank about five times, and that is 25 gallons a minute. Now this is just to and from my filtration. I also have a closed loop pump under my tank that will eventually be installed and activated, and that will that'll generate another couple thousand gallons an hour. Um, and that's what's called laminar flow or flow along the tank. My skimmer, by design, needs 375 gallons an hour, which is 7 gallons a minute. And my UV filter, I actually decided to move my UV filter um, out of my tank and uh, in line. So I've drawn a, a diagram here, and I have not filled in the, the refugium value. There's some there's some discussion online, and frankly, until I have the algae in it, I'm not going to know what I like about the, the flow. So what I've done is I've designed into my um, sump a way to adjust the amount of flow that goes through the, ref, the refugium. So what I've done here is I've drawn just a sectional diagram. I will take my water that goes back to the tank from the bottom of the return section. It'll go through my pump and off to the tank. The chiller will be will have a uh, port on the side of this where it can draw water and return it. Um, this will be returned below the water level. There'll be an automatic top off here, some probes mounted. There'll be a little rack for some probes that'll be glued to the side. I am going to build this out of acrylic. The refugium will be all of the space that's in between and it will have a deep sand bed of five to six inches and one of the things I'm going to incorporate is a bypass which is just going to be a piece of two inch PVC with a ball valve on it that way I can close down the amount of flow that goes through there or open it up and let more more water through and then there'll be a section with water or uh, with rock where the water will go through there and then it will be available to the other sections of the 
of the um, sump. Now, the way my tank is set up, inside the house, the tank sits on a stand, and the sump winds up being down here in another room. So what I'm going to do is I'm I am on a crusade to reduce the cost of having a reef tank. So I've installed LED lights. I've also installed some some skylights over my tank because metal halide lights simply run up your light bill and generate tons of heat that you have to pay to get rid of. Um, and so as my water exits my tank, it comes down and it comes over and it comes back up. Well, I'm going to get a free ride off of it and that's where I'm going to hook my skimmer and my UV filter in. So what I've realized is that as long as I don't come up to this level, I could bring the water, I mean you could bring the water to right here and it's still going to flow from here to there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up and then I'm going to come over and come down. And the purpose of coming up like this is that I can tap my, um, I, I can put a tap here on this with a valve and I can draw water from my um, skimmer and my UV filter. And that will lower the cost of operating my tank by eliminating two pumps. Um, and then one of the things that's built in here is I have a, um, second line that drops in. I'll actually draw this in a little bit more detail because some of you may find it interesting. So this is the side of my sump. It sits on a, a bench like this and you've got a three inch pipe coming up. We'll go ahead and bring this up all the way. And I have a two inch pipe that doesn't actually go like that. It goes along here and it comes up and it drops in. And there's actually an air gap there of about a half an inch. And the purpose of this, this is my emergency overflow. So over here in my, on the end of my tank, I have a box. And there is a submerged inlet. There is a surface skimming inlet. And there's a valve and a valve. And these two join into a three inch pipe that actually goes to there. But then there is a two inch pipe and I'm just gonna bring this over here like this. My drawing's not that fantastic. This is my backup. So if for some reason one of these was to become clogged, I can route all, uh, the excess flow would go through here. This is loud and noisy. It is a straight shot pipe. It is designed to be loud and noisy to get people's attention to go, hey, something is really wrong here. Um, eventually, I will probably incorporate some kind of a flow sensor into this and build it into my digital aquatics uh, reef keeper system so that it can send me an email and go, hey, something's really wrong, you need to go look. But the other benefit this has is any bubbles that somehow make it through this, <clears throat> as they come up this pipe, they're going to get dumped out the top here, so air will come out the pipe and then this flow will not be that big of a deal and I'll actually you know I'll actually play with that a little bit um, I pioneered a well I don't want to say I didn't pioneer it I decided that um, when I was building acrylic that it made more sense to cement ABS fittings into some of my uh, components than it did to drill an oversized hole and to fit it with a, um, a bulkhead. Bulkheads are expensive and they represent another point of potential failure. Um, <clears throat> on one well-known website a large argument ensued. A self-appointed expert um, disagreed with me and I subsequently got banned over that. But um, I, I'm not real concerned because this setup uses welded uh, PVC fittings that have been welded in here, here, and here. It's been up for over six months and I have yet to see any of the horrible things he promised me would happen. Um, so, you know, if you were to weigh whether or not you should weld ABS 
uh, or PVC plastic to acrylic, um, weld on the manufacturer of the cement, and the rest of the industry say it can be done. The expert in Pennsylvania who is on the internet says it can't be. I don't know, I think the engineers probably know more about plastic than the expert. Uh, anyway, so this system, I'm actually going to weld fit it here, here, and here. Uh, because what this does is instead of having a 10 or $15, or in this case a 3 inch bulk head, uh, bet head would probably be $35 or $40. So instead of having a really expensive bulk head, I'm going to wind up with a PVC fitting. And I use um, slip to female fittings. And the reason I use a slip to female fitting is it'll be threaded here and it's slip here. So I don't normally glue the, the plumbing that's inside the tank. And um, by having it be a thread, I can thread something on there. I usually seal it with silicone um, so that, because I don't like Teflon in my system. So I seal that with silicone. And that way, if I ever need to disassemble the system, I can easily disassemble it. Um, this will be built primarily out of acrylic that is left over from the construction of my tank. Um, I had to buy it in sheet sizes to get what I wanted. But uh, because I'm going up over, by bringing this up over, my tank water level is somewhere around here, and my sump water level is here, so I've got this excess. And basically, in this area, I can draw off water that I've already paid to pump once with this pump. I pumped it up to this level, so as it's falling back down, I can take some of that water and divert it and run it through my skimmer and run it through my UV filter with two separate taps. Those taps will be done with a valve, and that will allow me to adjust the flow to what I think is approximately correct. And... Um, The dimensions of this are going to really be determined, uh, like if you were to look at this at a different angle. This will be a top view. So, you'll have your intake here and rocks. I'll just draw that. So this area will actually be have a lot of large coarse rock in it so the water flows through it. And then um, there will be something along this probably is what it will look like. Uh, a large section will be for the return. The return will be, you know, over here in the corner. And I will put a um, screen on here to keep um, fish from or anything else from getting sucked into my pump. Um, you know what they say, uh, prevention is, you know, a, a, a penny of cure is a, or what is it, a penny of prevention is cheaper than a pound of cure. Um, same thing here. So this bypass tube will be actually just simply between there and then there'll be a ball valve installed here. This deep sand bed is probably going to be four to five inches. Um, the whatever doesn't flow through, this will be adjusted to allow the right amount of water to flow from here to this section, and then whatever flows through here will obviously flow into here. Um, there'll be some drop, so I would anticipate a water level here, and a water level like this, so that water wants to go here, and water wants to go here, and then this bypass is used to a map regulate the amount of water that goes over the over the uh, baffle. Um, some people strongly